back to the daily grind thanks for checking out the channel make sure to hit subscribe if you're new and hit thumbs up if you're not a baby back bagel biting bitch boy cause you know what time it is it's full time MMA and last night in the main event of UFC 221, Yoel Romero knocked out Luke Rockhold in the third round. And now, if you think about the last two years of the UFC's middleweight division, that thing has been log jammed with nothing but killers. Like, we, there was really no way to tell who the absolute best middleweight on the planet was. There was just no way. I mean, Bisping had the belt at one point, and nobody really felt like he was the best middleweight on the planet, especially with the killers in the top five. But with the way the belt was held up by Bisping and then GSP fighting for the belt, there was no clear-cut you know, champion. Now Robert Whitaker became the interim champion with the win over Yoel Romero, but we still you know, didn't know how Robert Whitaker might do versus a Chris Weidman or a Luke Rocco who might get them. There was just so many killers, not to mention Gegard Mousasi was amongst those, those names before signing with Bellator, but he also had a claim for the title shot. Now you've got Kelvin Gastelum in the mix, but out of all of those names, one one person has risen to the top and and a lot of this came to a conclusion with the UFC 221 main event between Yoel Romero and Luke Rockhold. Now let me explain. The answer is the UFC's current middleweight champion Robert Whitaker. He's the best middleweight on the UFC's roster. Spoiler alert, he's not the best in the on the planet in my opinion. That goes to Gegard Mousasi and as I said, Yoel Romero versus Luke Rockhold is really what uh, cemented this to me. Let me explain what I'm saying. All right, so it used to be out of the top four in the middleweight division Chris Weidman, Luke Rockhold, Yoel Romero, Jacare Souza, Robert and Gegard Mousasi. Uh, Robert Whitaker and Derek Brunson were right on the outside, you know, getting knockouts, doing their thug dizzle, right on the outside of that top five. Well, they ended up fighting Robert Whitaker and Derek Brunson. Derek Brunson was on a five-fight knockout spree. Robert went. To, Robert Whitaker was also in, on an impressive winning streak in the middleweight division. Robert Whitaker ends up knocking out Derek Brunson, so now he gets a shot versus somebody in this top five. These guys, you know, a lot of the top four, top five, uh, they were they weren't wanting to fight because they felt like the division was held up. So Chris Weidman or Luke Rockhold might have been injured. You know, Luke Rockhold didn't fight. After he lost his belt, he, he only fought one time versus David Branch, so we didn't really get to see Luke Rockhold mix it up with none of those guys to really answer who's the best, who really deserves the next title shot. Well, Robert Whitaker beat Derek Brunson, and then he did get a fight versus Jacare Souza. A lot of people at the time picked Jacare to win because he was one of those four killers. No one really, everyone was looking past Robert Whitaker, like, yeah, you know, he's he's been he just knocked out Derek Brunson and he's on a winning streak, but this is one of those four killers that we all look at as one of the next champions. Robert Whitaker was still outside of that picture. Gegard Mousasi couldn't get a fight versus one of those guys either. Now, he ended up getting that fight versus Chris Weidman, but the ending was somewhat controversial, even though Gegard got the win, it was somewhat controversial. At uh, the middleweight division, there's been so much going on, and I'm glad we got a clear-cut winner. So, Robert Whitaker went up to beat Jock Ray. Super impressive fashion. Still didn't earn him a title shot because some people might have thought it was a little... They, the way the performance went, there was no way it was a fluke, but people still didn't feel like Robert Whitaker was definitely in um, the best middleweight on the planet or even number one contender just because he beat Jacare. That's where people start to say, well, maybe Jacare's past his prime. Maybe Jacare was injured. Maybe, you know, there's reasons that people were giving for why Robert Whitaker could have won. Now, since then, Jacare's went on to still look great and everything that's happened, we know Robert Whitaker is just a fucking, you know, UFC middleweight champion, so that he when he fought Jock Ray and beat Jock Ray, now it's not too crazy as it was when he first did it. So Robert Whitaker had to get another fight, and it was the interim title fight he got after that. But that's after Luke Rockhold and Chris Weidman, I believe one of them was injured. So it was Yoel Romero versus Robert Whitaker for the interim middleweight title. Robert Whitaker gets his leg hurt in the first round. Yoel Romero could have caused it either way. Robert Whitaker was essentially one-legged after the first round and still went on to win a decision versus Yoel Romero and become the interim champion. So he went on to beat Jacare, Yoel Romero, and Derek Brunson to become the UFC middleweight title. Meanwhile, you had Chris Weidman, who lost... Um, 
his fight to Gegard Mousasi, he actually went on like a three fight losing skid. He was like one of those top four, but then he lost to Gegard Mousasi. Uh, I believe he lost to Yoel Romero. Then Chris Weidman might have got also one more loss before finally beating Kelvin Gastelum. But Kelvin Gastelum, you know, was coming up from welterweight and also hasn't beat any really prime middleweights. I mean, he beat Michael Bisping after, you know, on short notice after Bisping just got dropped and knocked out. But that's really... You know, Kelvin Gastelum hasn't beat any of the Derek Brunsons, the Yoel Romeros, the Jacare's, the, the you know, the Rockholds, the Weidmans. Actually, when Gastelum fought Weidman, it what you know, he, he landed a good shot. But after that, it was kind of like Curtis Blades versus Mark Hunt. You landed a good shot in the first round, but then you essentially went on to get dominated. That's what happened with Chris Weidman versus Kelvin Gastelum. Chris Weidman's wrestling, it was just way too much for Kelvin Gastelum. He ended up getting submitted. So now Kelvin Gastelum's making his claim to the title shot, but he's kind of waiting. You know, he's not really fighting any of the top guys because it might not be good matchups for Kelvin Gastelum. That's why he's not the best middleweight on the planet, even though he might fight Robert Whitaker and he's got a chance at knocking him out. But if Chris Weidman gets a rematch for the title versus Gastelum, you know, it's probably not going to go too good for Gastelum. It's probably the same with Rockhold, Romero. Romero's actually one of the number one contenders again. And maybe we need to see Gastelum versus Romero to see who gets the next title shot. Because um, we'll talk about that at another time. Because with Yo Romero winning that fight, he didn't become the interim champion. Which means he's not guaranteed a title shot. He might have to fight one more time. All type of stuff going on in the middleweight division. But either way, out of those four names, Weidman took some losses. Rockhold lost to Bisping. Some people called it a fluke, but now, as of last night, we also saw him get knocked out by Yoel Romero, so that's not too much of a fluke. So Weidman and Rockhold are out of the best middleweight in the world for today's conversation. Jacare, he lost to Whitaker, the current champion, and it was, you know, pretty one-sided. One second. So if you're talking about Robert Whitaker and Jacare, that goes to Robert Whitaker. There's three of those names. So you had Luke Rockhold, Chris Weidman, Jacare, Array, we, and Whitaker's taking the nod over all of them. Last person, Yoel Romero. Chris, Luke Rock, or Robert Whitaker already beat Yoel Romero as well. So out of those four killers that were at the top of the division, Robert Whitaker has rightfully passed all of them, became champion, and, I mean, you've got an argument for why he's the better middleweight than all of those guys at this point. Now you've got the Kelvin Gastelums on the rise, and of course, the one name that we don't know because he didn't lose in the UFC, and we haven't seen him versus Robert Whitaker. They've never fought. That fucking fight, I would pay $100 to, if that was the headline of a card, I would pay $100. Robert Whitaker versus Gegard Mousasi. Gegard Mousasi is now in Bellator. There's some fucking trolls that say, oh yeah, but he, he lost to Schlemanklo. No, he didn't. He had fucking one eye and he still went on to win the fight, in my opinion. It was close, but he had one eye and still didn't get finished, and he's the better fighter. If they fought again, and Gegard had two eyes, he's winning the fight. So Gegard, yeah, take that off. And even if you don't take it off, he still got the W. Add it on. <laughs> so Gegard Mousasi was 5-0 and when he left the motherfucking UFC, bro. I got Gegard Mousasi. Boom, fuck you time, Matt. Gegard Mousasi win over Weidman. I mean, he's he's got a win over Jack Ray. It was a uh, you know, he, he he fucking was losing to Jack Ray, but this was before Usada, I believe. But even after Usada he fought Jack Ray, so I don't want to say anything about that. Jack Ray, you know, is a is a very talented middleweight. But Gegard Mousasi and Jack Ray, I believe, are one and one. Now Uriah Hall, yeah, Gegard Mousasi has a loss to Uriah Hall, it was a spin kick, I mean, it could happen to anybody in MMA, he avenged that loss, so Gegard Mousasi is my one of my favorite fighters and favorite middleweights on the planet, I think Gegard Mousasi is the only middleweight that I can make a case for beating Robert Whitaker right now, I mean, anyone can land a shot, of course, but as far as overall, well-rounded fighters, I got Gegard Mousasi versus Robert Whitaker. And, and, you know, those other top four guys in all the middleweight division, the top five is nothing but fucking killers. But Robert Whitaker has risen to the top of the pack. I mean, to, as I said, Rock Holden Weidman took, took a couple of losses apiece. Now that, you know, we saw Yoel versus Rock Hold. Yoel and Jacare have both already lost to Whitaker. So out of those four guys, Whitaker's at the top of the pack. Now you got Gaslam coming up, of course. You've got um, the style bender. Uh, Israel Adesanya coming up. You've got 
Paulo Costa coming up. There's some young killers coming up, but Robert Whitaker himself is only like 26, so those guys got their hands full with the current middleweight champion. It's a great time to be an MMA fan, and if you're paying attention to the middleweight division, man, that shit's crazy how it all played out. Robert Whitaker on top, Gegar Mousasi's at Bellator. What if Gegard Mousasi becomes the Bellator middleweight champion and we can get some type of crazy co-promote and we get to see Robert Whitaker versus Gegard Mousasi? Holy shit, that would be the fucking fight to make. That's the biggest fight I think I want to see right now. Like right now, today, cross promote any organization. I want to see Gegard Mousasi versus Robert Whitaker to know who's the absolute best middleweight on the planet. But that's just me, a fucking MMA fan. And it is what it is. So let the full time family know what you think in the comments. I'm out. It's the motherfucking D-O-Double-G.